ACT Math, More Comprehension in Less Time, Part 1. This is Ken Boyd, owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number below. And the website at the end of this presentation, we do English Math and ACT Test Preparation courses. This course is about ACT Math, and this is an introduction that talks about the format of the math exam. The exam consists of 60 multiple choice questions. Students must have 60 minutes to answer the question, so it's one minute per question. That's an important point we'll get to later. There's five or six areas covered. Algebra, pre-algebra, plane geometry, coordinate geometry, and the last, the most difficult, is trigonometry. Don't be intimidated by that if you're in trig now or you're still waiting to take the course. There's not that many questions on trigonometry. The biggest challenge for students. First, the ACT math tests a wide variety of topics. If you go through a test preparation book, you'll see a wide variety of topics. Second, many students have forgotten or maybe they never mastered the first time around. Some of the most basic topics tested. So you may be in calculus right now, but you can't remember the rules for square roots because it's been so long since you've had them or you don't use those math skills that often. More on math strategy. Any method you use to answer a question that works is fine. Go with it. Here's my best example, and I see this with uh, younger students. Let's say you're asked to add a mixed number, which is a whole number plus a fraction. Most people add the whole numbers together and then find a common denominator for the fractions and deal with the fractions. However, if you prefer to convert both mixed numbers into improper fractions, then find a common denominator and add them together, go ahead and do it. If you do that method consistently and you get right answers, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's not change that and make things more complicated. Consider what math courses you've had in the past. Was the course, what was the cor course was a struggle for you? Why was it difficult? Maybe it was the material, you just didn't understand that section of math. Maybe you had a busy schedule and were playing a sport, you didn't feel well. But for whatever reason, you had trouble in a certain math class. That math class may contain the topics that you need to review the most often and the topics you need to review first for the ACT exam. So think about that. Time management. Going back to that first slide on the format of the test, since you need about an average of one minute per question, skip the problems that are more difficult. You can come back to them later. The goal is to find and answer the easiest questions first. This is the goal throughout the ACT, and it's particularly useful to use time management during the math section, more than any other section of the test. Now, a lot of students, when they come to a difficult question, will try to plug the answer choices. They'll take the answer choices and work backwards to see if they can fit them into the question. If you're stuck using this method, if it's your only approach, it's likely that you're taking too much time. Working backwards is time consuming, so if you find that you're doing that to answer a question, skip it and come back to it. If the method you're using is complicated, if it's five or six steps long, it may indicate that you're on the wrong track. The reason I say that, you should always keep in mind that the time you're allotted for the exam is so short that the method can't be that complicated. So if you feel like it's taking a long time, even if you know the method, you know how to answer it, it may mean you're on the wrong track. Return to that question later. There are some basic formulas you need to memorize. They're in any ACT test prep book that you get at school, that you get at the bookstore. They all have them in there. A good example of what you'll need to memorize are areas of squares, rectangles, triangles, etc. So there is some memorization required on the exam. Remember that we're trying to maximize the correct answers, not minimize the wrong ones. So I always encourage students to get close on an answer. So let's say you're three steps into a four-step problem and you're stuck. You skip it, you come back to it later on in the exam. If you're running short on time, review your answer choices and eliminate the ones that are not reasonable, the ones that are way off from your getting close answer. 
and pick from the best remaining answer based on the work you've already done. So if you're stuck between 300 and 350, pick one and move on. Because if you've come up with something close to those two numbers, it's likely that one of them is the correct answer. Use all your time. Even though you're tired and you've got a headache at the end of the exam, if you've hopefully finished all the questions, please use that remaining time to review your answers. It's very likely that if you go back and review the most difficult questions first, you'll find and you'll be able to correct some questions. So it's worth it to sit there and use your time. And the way you accomplish that review is by having legible scratch paper. Write your work on scratch paper or on the booklet as you work the exam. Make sure it's legible. If you can follow your computations on scratch paper, you can quickly use them to find incorrect answers. You may find a math error on the scratch paper itself. Our bibliography, as I said, you can get lots of resources at the bookstore. We happen to use the Barron's ACT version from 2008. You also have the ACT website. That's the end of our math introduction. You can find part two of it on YouTube. You can also find live tutoring and live chat sessions on our website, www.stltest.net. And we'll see you next time.